So I'm Gareth Simpson, the Trade and Investment Commissioner here in New York, and I'm at the Live Tiles headquarters in New York City with Carl Redenbach, co-founder and CEO. Uh, Carl, to kick things off, could you give us in a nutshell what it is that Live Tiles does? Well, thanks, Gareth. Thanks for having us here and joining our office. Live Tiles is essentially what we call an intelligent workplace, which is we're trying to make it simple for employees at large companies and medium-sized companies, even small companies, to be able to collaborate and share information. In this crazy world of the cloud, when there's so much confusion going on with so many systems, we simplify it into one experience and we use artificial intelligence to make it even simpler so that basic tasks and other information can be used and shared without having to go through the, the cumbersome processes. So it's exciting. Um, certainly we think it's the best field to be in. It's great to be here in New York City. So what brought you here to the US and to New York City in particular? Yeah, certainly, you know, I look back being in Australia, it seems like a long way away from anywhere. However, uh, I think to be successful tech company today, you've got to think global. And, and when you're thinking global, the US is obviously a huge market. It's the biggest market in the world in, in tech. And, and you know the most certainly amount of companies you can sell to, and the most companies that will take up, especially new tech. So I think from our perspective, seeing the US as a market, firstly, is a key one to come into. And then secondly, New York City. You know, there is no bigger and better place. When you walk up and down here in Manhattan, you've got the biggest customers in the world. And you know, we have customers here like Estee Lauder, uh, huge companies that are all around us here that I think make it uh, an amazing market to be in, particularly New York City from that perspective. Yeah, that makes a lot of sense. And I, I, I can understand that it's an amazing market, but I'm, I'm sure it's not always easy. Could you give us the, an example perhaps of the biggest professional challenge and perhaps the biggest personal challenge that you faced when you first came over here? Well, I think from a professional perspective, you know, you're an Australian, you, you're used to doing business. We had some very big customers, you know, from our whole, whole work career working in Australia in the business. Uh, but the US is a different challenge. You know, it's a different culture. And I think professionally, you've got to get over the hurdle that you're from this country on the other side of the world. Great news is, Americans love Australians. Uh, they really do. And I really think it's a, a great opportunity for any Aussie to come out here, live here, work here, and, and, and you'll be surprised about, from a professional perspective, how much they will engage with you. So that was the first challenge, just getting over that fear of the big jump, of jumping on an aeroplane and, and shifting my whole family over to, to the US. And from a personal perspective, that was very similar in that, um, you know, landed here, um, three children under, under four at the time, and, and having it set up from scratch, literally no visas, nothing. And, and I thought, I've got to give this US a great chance to give myself an opportunity to go into this huge market. And it takes a lot of guts to do it, and it takes a lot of conviction. But once you do it, you know, there's no looking back. And certainly, the best move we ever made as a business is being here, being in the US. It is the biggest market and the best place to be. One of the really interesting things you've done as you've grown in, in recent years is you've expanded and you've expanded recently, I think it's called, correct me if I'm wrong, the User Experience Hub in Rochester. Correct. Yeah. Uh, so can you talk us through why you went to Rochester and, and what you see in some of what might be called second tier cities or definitely outside of the biggest cities that, that an Australian company might look to in the first instance? Yeah, well, one of the great things, so we set up a, a, an R&D centre, a development hub in Rochester, which is about five hours drive from here, Manhattan, an hour flight. And one of the great things about setting up there is that we've got a huge pool of talent that is in a regional area that we aren't in a Silicon Valley or we aren't even here in New York. It's hard to retain the talent, it's hard to keep them engaged, it's hard to make sure that they're brought into a, a place that really is trying to, to go to a next level. So one of the great things about these regional areas particularly Rochester, is we're able to tap into that talent, keep that talent, and keep them there. Interestingly enough, we use this strategy in Australia. You know, we, we have an office in Hobart, we have an office in Geelong. Those regional areas, we have 100% retention of our staff, and that's one of the great things. Um, so certainly I'd encourage anyone looking at the US not just to think about the big cities, but also think about what we've done and, and, and putting yourself into one of these regional locations. Carl, I know that you've worked with Austrade a little bit over the years. Can you talk through how you worked with Austrade and how they've been able to help? Before we even launched, we spoke to our local Austrade rep, and then we actually came to New York City. We toured the office, they introduced us all into the relevant people to help us with things like visas, help us with things like lawyers and accountants. And, and literally before we even set up here, 
we were able to take advantage of the, the Austrade network. Even to this very day, I've been nearly here for eight years, we still regularly catch up with Austrade. It's a very close-knit community here in New York of Australians, and Austrade have been a huge connection, and not just here in New York, um, here in other places. Uh, you know, we speak to, to Austrade around how do they help us in Europe if we're doing something there. Um, these sort of connections, I think, are critical, and, and again, you know, my strong advice is go and speak to someone in Australia. It doesn't take long and they're going to be more than happy to help you, not just with the basic and initial needs, but to help you connect you with other people that have gone through exactly what you're thinking about doing. And I think that's a key thing. And if you were to give um, another sort of simple, important piece of advice to Aussie founders looking at the US, is there one other thing that immediately jumps out? Don't be scared. As I said, I think a lot of the, a lot of, one of our big customers is Nike. I think honestly they have the best slogan, which is just do it. And, and a lot of people think, you know, oh, it's a long way away. It, it's not, it's not that far. It's a, you know, you get to LA in 14 or 15 hours, a few more hours here to New York, be anywhere in, in, in literally back, in, back to Australia the next day if you want to. But don't be scared, come out, give it a go, just do it and give it a try and, and see how it goes. And you might surprise yourself. I think there are so many opportunities here. There's so many big customers that you can take advantage of that I think in a lot of ways, it's a lot easier than Australia. So I think if just simple advice, as I said, Nike, just do it and give it a try.